Over the course of this conversation, Nicole, you've mentioned so many other issues that this group is facing, right? There's not just the college affordability, which gets the majority of the air in any room. There's food insecurity. You mentioned domestic violence, obviously child care services, so people can then go to class and study. Is there legislation that your organization is pushing for that is either comprehensive that addresses all of this, or is is it a piece-by-piece piece strategy that you're pursuing? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I wish there was a magic wand piece of legislation that would solve for everything. I think, as you said, um, you know, our work touches almost every issue uh, that this country is facing. Uh, the families that we work with are, unfortunately, they are at the intersection of so many of these issues and these challenges. You know, for COVID-19, for example, um, they we, we really were helping people to understand that this population was in crisis well before COVID-19. But then when COVID-19 hit, they were literally at the epicenter of it. You know, they were more likely to be those hourly workers or essential workers. They were more likely to be without childcare, um, more likely to be experiencing mental health stressors. So, you know, this is a population that sits at the epicenter of so many of the issues that we care about. Um, what we are doing is we're looking at opportunities to create margin for these families. So, for example, uh, college affordability is really important. If I'm a mother or father and I want to go to college, the first thing I think about is not being able to afford it. And so we know that one in four college students across the country is currently enrolled and is, is parenting. But that doesn't include how many more millions more mothers and fathers would go to college if they felt like they could afford it. So we're looking at free college uh, proposals. We're looking at doubling the Pell Grant, which is really, you know, funding that helps students be able to afford college, particularly, you know, low income students. Um, we're looking at housing solutions. We're looking at child care. How can we create margin, especially financially, for these students to be successful? But there's also another side of that, which is that if we create that margin and we make college more affordable, we have to have institutions that know how to support this population. You know, if they get into an institution, but they're in a, an environment that doesn't see them as parents, that doesn't understand not only the challenges that they face, but the assets that they bring to the classroom, it's not likely that those students are going to be successful at those institutions. So we're also really looking at capacity building grants that go to institutions, particularly underfunded institutions, community colleges, HBCUs, MSIs, uh, to be able to give them the training and the support and the capacity to really transform their institutions to be more family inclusive. You know, a great example is many colleges across the country, not only do they not track that data on parenting students, but they have a policy called no kids on campus. And that means, you know, if I'm a parent and I need to get extra help from a professor for a midterm the next day and my child care fell through, I'm not going to get that extra help and I'm, I may fail that midterm, right? Um, so how do we help colleges understand that they can still meet student, students' needs but be family inclusive environments. And so that work has to go hand in hand. 